Today, I'm going to be correcting the error in my ways, and I'm going to be listening to Fleetwood Mac's rumors for the very first time. Today, we're just going to be tackling side one, and just to clear up any confusion, I have heard three of these songs on this album, but those are the only songs that I've heard, and two of them are going to be featured on side one today, which are Dreams and Go Your Own Way, and I absolutely love those songs, so I hope that that's some sort of indication that this is gonna go well. Starting at the top, number one, we have Secondhand News, which is so appropriately titled considering that this album is called Rumors. Perfect. So far, very major. I love all the guitar action. Feels very acoustic right now. There's a slight country twang going on and the percussion is, is really nice. <laughs> I love that section. It feels like we had a little vocal percussion a little bit, just the delivery was a little more staccato and poppy. It was really fun. And then it got a little bit more percussion heavy in general. Even as backing vocals, Stevie Nicks voice just comes shining through like a beautiful ray of sunshine. They gave us some beautiful, gleaming, overarching pitches that just kind of glossed over everything, flew above, and then um, the dynamics slowly increased. Like there was a crescendo there until the end, and it had a peak moment where uh, it was at forte, and then it cut out. And I'm guessing it was an organ because it just gave that little Pink Floydian zest. <laughs> Right there at the end, for some reason, I thought that uh, the electric guitars were about to be a violin off of the first few pitches. I thought that, the, that it was a violin or like a cello or a string section because of the, the organ, but then it was made very clear that those were electric guitars. Um, and another thing that kind of startled me about it is that it was a stark contrast to the ambiance that they had set forth with the acoustic guitars making the entire song feel a little more acoustic, a little more rustic. It was very, very fun. There was a total air of happiness and cheer, cheerfulness and carelessness, carefreeness. Not carelessness, carefreeness. Um, and I think a lot of that is due to the really cool percussion, all the activity that was going on there. There was like some like rain-like sounds, very beautiful. And I think there was a snare drum that added a little kick to it. Even though there was this air of ease about the song, I could tell that these vocals weren't exactly easy to execute. There was a lot of really long sustained notes he had to hold for a while. And that takes a lot of support and it was executed beautifully. Number two is dreams. Now I know you, but I'm going to do my best to come at it as if it's really my first listen. There's a little bit of mystery and eeriness in this song too that I've never, never really acknowledged before. First, we're gonna talk about her vocals, which are, it's a whole, a whole thing, a whole ordeal, very confusing because there's something so smoky and mysterious. I guess she's what adds the mystery of this song, but then they're also so velvety smooth, like, like a piece of fabric that's like silky, but it's still, there's rasp on it, but that rasp is integrated so evenly and so smoothly. I also realized that this song was a lot more major than I had given it credit before. I thought that just because of this like kind of looming, eerie, haunting nature of the song, I thought it was in minor or I thought there was like some diminished going on, but it's actually really major. It's not a major vibe. I wanted to just make that clear. It's, it doesn't feel very 
very carefree and happy like secondhand news did. This is very different, yet this is still existing in the major, which is so crazy. And I'd never paid attention to the um, bass guitar, which is just so gorgeous. <laughs> explosive chorus is just so insane. It feels like those transitions are recalling the very first transition, the one that just led into the song, the little drum moment. It built the suspense and tension so well. And then we had that huge release, like a rainbow, um, whenever the phrases would begin. So insane and gorgeous, the way that the percussion and the drums communicated with the vocals. And then the way that the chords actually are giving us a little bit of some flavor. We got a little bit of sevenths in there. <laughs> counter melody going in and out weaving through the actual vocal lead line the lead melody the way that they're playing with each other is so beautiful it's like a fish jumping in and out of water <laughs> some really, really high pitches going on there. Then we still had that really high pitch ringing out through the end, kind of proving that it was always there. It was one of the last to let go. It just kind of overarched over everything like a, the way that a sustained pedal would for a piano. This song just sounds like what you get when you capture magic. Number three is Never Going Back Again. There's just something so sweet and simple about the melody and the way each of the phrases end uh, instrumentally and uh, the vocals on this one are so amazing spectacular i love it i love um the transition into the more full belted out um chorus that's so amazing there's there's a slight rasp but not the same as with stevie nicks this is a little bit more like husky less vocal fry and i love the major acoustic feel going on sweet that it breaks your heart. It makes me so happy, but there's something melancholy about the happiness. And there's something so satisfying about that one little minor transition in a song so full of major that exists in this major world. But yet the major is what makes this song so heartbreaking. But then when that minor kicks in, it is a little, a little stab in the back. You know, this whole time it's kind of like tugging at your heartstrings and then bam, they get you from behind. I really love this one in a very sweet, simple acoustic way. Hoy nuestro número cuatro va a ser Don't Stop. love this combo feel of this electronic presence. Then we had some piano. I love some keys coming through. It sounds so wonderful. Very major, very happy, sunshine, bright, just a good time. <laughs> Just 
I love how rock and roll this one feels, like with the electric guitars and just all the presence of the electronic nature of this song. All of that just fixed itself so well in this one and just became this rock anthem. <laughs> So Fleetwood Mac definitely has a groove with the majors. They know how to play with majors and make them sound a three billion trillion different types of ways. Whatever feeling that they want to give you, they can give it to you with a major. And I feel like the character of each song has to do with the relationship between the switch up, between what happens when we go from the major into something different. So here we have uh, the end of each verse kind of trailing off into like a seven. And the feeling that that evokes is like this feeling of hope for some reason with this song, they, they've combined uh, major and sevenths and more major and major and major because the song lives in major land. And um, they've given us a rock song that's filled with hope and happiness. <laughs> Just gotta be so grateful and thankful for show off guitarists who can really just take us to another dimension. <laughs> did an excellent job of incorporating these really celestial beautiful pitches these notes that kind of just soared over everything in a very different electronic yet magical way i love the presence of all every percussive element in this song so great i love the keys so far we haven't had a bad moment which i'm really really happy about second to last we've got number five go your own way now i know this one too but i'm even less familiar with this one than i was to dreams and there was a lot to unpack there, so I'm hoping that this is like even more. An interesting observation right off the bat is how the mixing feels different in this song, especially comparing it to the other one that I knew dreams where it felt like the vocal was placed forefront like it was the focal point it was spotlight in front and center but this time it feels like the vocals are taking a back seat to even the percussion like the percussion feels like it's surrounding the sound like you're being enveloped by this percussion by all these drums and all this activity going around that's making it feel very exciting kind of makes me feel like i'm getting amped up like it's like building this energy inside like a like a charger it's charging us up like da -da 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 -da. <laughs> So much better than I ever remembered. It just gives me this feeling that's like beyond elated. I feel musical ecstasy right now. The vocal is excellent. Uh, this one feels like it would be the hardest. Like this is the vocal Olympics of this album so far. Like just having to belt this really powerful um, chorus. A, a little similar to um, Never Going Back Again, but this one just feels like there's, there's pain in a different way. I'm not gonna say there's more pain. There's just, um, it's more like an argument, it's argumentative. And then we had moments where the bass guitar shined through and it was delicious. That is so cool, the way that they're sustaining notes on the electric guitar, just letting it trail on even though chords keep changing and the song keeps moving. when the explosive uh, chorus hit, I thought, oh, maybe they're doing that thing. Maybe they're manipulating these majors to, to feel argumentative and to feel angry and non-major like. But then I remembered another observation that we had made, which is that a lot of these songs, the character comes through um, when you look at the relationship between the major and the shift. So here, even though I thought maybe it could be a major, I realized the second time around, no, it's, it's a minor and it is really carrying forward that kind of 
angry, spiteful, but also longing nature. It's, it's this very complicated feeling. Now, like a lot of the other songs, this song does exist mostly in a major, it's majorly major, but then to have that explosive moment lead with a minor into this, um, this chorus, it allows for a big contrast, a huge transition, and it's followed and accompanied by this percussively heavy, explosive moment. <laughs> In a lot of those like jam out moments where we just dug deep into that electric guitar and it was very show offy and very emotional and rock and roll, I could see a clear connection to where this is the sound that I think inspired a lot of Taylor Swift's more rock songs, like songs like The Story of Us or Better Than Revenge, just kind of in that vein. I feel like I could see where she pulled inspiration from this material here. Last and hopefully not least, we've got Songbird. This kind of reminds me of and it feels kind of like River, the Christmas song. Love the vocal slides and the runs and the riffs it's delivered in a way that makes me feel like the voice is like a figure skater gliding on ice it's infused with some sorrow even though there's a lot of happiness it feels very melancholy <laughs> I'm obsessed with every variation of that run that she gives and I love you So beautiful and um, here the relationship of this majorly major song and having it interrupted and you know tug at our throat you know like when your throat starts closing up because you you're about to cry or you're crying they do that with these minor chords and that's what fills the space with this this happiness that also is driven by by passionate sadness i feel like this song is just a great portrayal of love because that's that's what love is you know it's this it, ma it makes the world go round you know it's a happy feeling but it causes a lot of pain as well the thought that got me so emotional hearing this song and listening to the lyrics are that even though it's beautiful and it's so true and every every word feels so honest is that it feels it could also be dedicated to someone who is no longer here and that just, oh my gosh, that just killed me. That shattered me. <laughs> but in the best way, in a cathartic, therapeutic way. Thank you for listening to this astounding side with me. I can't wait for side two. And for those of you, which is probably the majority that have already heard this album, the whole thing, um, I'm so glad that now I am amongst one of you, at least for side one, and I will join you at side two. I want to give a huge loving thank you to our super thanks heroes that keep the show running. Thank you to Paul Edwards, Marissa Martinez, Ed Myers, Bob Charles, and Swedish Jeff. I appreciate you guys so much and love you with all my heart. Oh, Jeff and Bob, you're the best.
the best there ever could be. Not only the best to me, but you shine for the whole world to see. Thank you. Sending you wishes of love, light, happiness, and endless blessings. You put all the stars to shine in the night sky. In the night sky. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I cannot thank you enough. And thank you for all of the support, all of the kindness. Remember to be on the lookout for side two. Until then, I hope you guys take lots of care of yourself. I hope you're having a great time. Happy September, by the way. I'm filming this on September 1st. Happy September. I love this month. Um, the last day of summer is September 22nd. So until then, I hope you get all your summer activities out. I hope you have a lot of fun. And don't forget to take it easy.